Here we are, guys. Vlog number two. As promised, after a very good night at Gigi's home game yesterday, we are going to go and fire the $100 freeze at the casino. It is a tournament that I've definitely eyeballed in the past. The past few weeks, it's got about a first prize of 1.8K. So that would be the goal tonight, obviously, is to go play well and then hope that goes and equals a massively deep run. I will say also thank you for the support on video one. I know it's only been up for a couple of hours since recording this. Already smashed, uh, you know, about 20 odd views, which is huge for me. Um, you know, quite a number of likes. Uh, so keep it up. Enjoying that sort of feedback. Please let me know in your comments what you would like to see as well. And let's go and hopefully run it up and put in a very good show here in the $100 freeze. Here we are, quick little 15 minute drive down to the Adelaide Casino, a place that I know very well, and that's gonna get a few laughs from a good set of my friends that know that I don't mind having a little bit of a gamble. No no life, no gamble, um, as they say, uh, but I definitely don't mind a little bit of a punt out the Adelaide Casino, especially after a few froffies. Now, anyhow, back to what we're doing here, and that is the $100 freeze. I think it's important to note that, you know, when you plan your night, you're also going to plan for the worst case scenario. What happens if we bust first hand? What happens if we bust early on, for instance? What do we do then? We've got two options. One of them is just to call it a night, recap the hands that was played, even if it's one, end of vlog, save as much as the profit from GG's the other night for GG's home game. Second thing is, is that they will be running a 2-2 no limit as well at the same time. Only problem with playing cash here tonight is that it's going to be very reg heavy because of the tournament. You will get a few, obviously, players that you can target and, you know, some regs are better than others, so to say, and all that sort of stuff. But um, I don't think Tuesday, Thursday night, sorry, is the night that you really want to play. Tuesday, Thursday for cash at the casino usually is a bit more quieter and a little bit more reg heavy. So I think I would definitely lean if we have a very early bust out to an early night home, which is definitely not the worst thing. Maybe jump on stream, links down below, kind of follow me live on Twitch. That would be Football Manager, though. Um, but it's important to plan for that and, you know, always plan for the worst case scenario. I do, however, brought in some extra additional funds just in case I do want to play cash and we'll give it a bit of a scout and a bit of an update in the vlog a little bit later. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, though. Let's hope we just run it up a stack. Let's hope we just build a nice big old chip leading stack and bully some people and find ourselves deep, deep, deep in this $100 freeze at the Adelaide Casino. Let's go on a lovely walk to the casino. I haven't parked at my usual spot. We're just in the car park of the casino. I've actually parked further away. So we get to enjoy a bit of a walk, a little bit of the scenery here that Adelaide has to offer in its CBD. First hour and a half done. Still in the tournament, which is great, but uh, a very topsy turby session that was. Uh, started off flying, came out the blocks good, felt 
in my A game, felt in my moment, in my mojo, doing everything right, just feeling really good. Found myself up to about 38, 39k, which is double starting with a 20k start stack. Um, and then uh, I've ended the break at 22k. Um, and not really like any tricky spots, just me putting myself in some stupid positions. Um, which we'll explain in a second. I've only got a 10 minute break. There's a couple of hands where I play really well, but I might just explain the ones that I play really bad um, straight here without no real hand breakdown. Just like I'm on a table which is really soft and I sometimes find them the hardest. Um, the reason is, is that like there's so many limped action pots and it's just like, what do you do? I've been in the small blind of like, limp like seven four six three it's like five ways and like you just limp along try and flop what you can and you're not meant to get involved in pops like that but i've like one of the pots had like ace six of clubs i was talking to another player on another table um and it was like the start of the downfall and it's not even tilt it's just picking wrong spots against wrong players um everyone on my table seems to be what i would describe as a station and you shouldn't bluff the station and for whatever reason I've decided in a couple of spots to really bet big on the river to put them to a test, and they've just called with a pair hand. Um, in this position here, I had ace, six of clubs. Uh, it limped to me on the bar, and I limped along. Um, check, like multi weight or flop. Doesn't matter anyway. The board is um, ace, queen, queen, jack of club turn, and it's checked to me again, and I've fired out here for 2k or k and a half, one of the two. Um, in the end, two calls. So I know that someone probably has an ace, someone probably has a jack. Um, would have heard from the queen, I reckon, um, unless they're really slow playing it. In the end, it was a deuce of spades. We missed our flush draw. We figured our flush draw was obviously good. Checks me again, and we fire out for like 5k, like pot size, like over, not over pot, but like pot size, roughly. Really polarizing. Got snap called by an ace and a jack. Um, even after the first player to act called with an ace, and the second player to act still called with a jack. So it shows the table that I'm at. It's just like getting not outplayed, but I'm like leveling myself. Uh, it's probably when, when you've probably done too much study and like, trying to be too aggressive and i've gone from having double starting stats and now 20 big blinds blinds go up fairly quickly here 15 minutes so when we go back blinds are five 100 or five 1k and i've got a 22k stack so it could be a double up really quick or a bust out hand there's obviously been hands we've whiffed we've whiffed a couple um you know we've had pairs and we've missed um and one of the other ones was uh quite a uh Quite a fun one where we had ace queen of hearts and station is also very tight pre and then she just calls with any pair post um and two limbs and she made it at 3k and i've got ace queen of hearts at like 400 800 and i'm like i'm not folding up my small blind i don't want to play this out of position um and like with that you know it came like two of hearts jack seven of diamonds and it's like there's no need to do proper hand breakdowns of these hands the moral of the story is here is just know your table no, it's not like a $500 tournament. No, that it's not like a $33 bounty builder online. It's just a $100 live game. Everyone loves the call. So, you know, rein it in and it should be some self-restraint. Um, do feel good. Do feel like I'm playing well. It's just those spots have just been really annoying that I've kind of run into it. And because of that, it's like... Uh, and the thing is, if I didn't make hands early, which I will describe at a later date, um, I might actually do it post again, as in tomorrow, give me more time to reflect on these hands. Um, I will say that I have played well but I've also leveled myself into making some really bad really polarizing big bets on the river which like instead of betting like 5k 2k probably would have worked and still folded if they had absolute squad douche so yeah I know why I'm doing it I'm trying to put people in a tough positions with like a one pair hand but in this game everyone's calling so stop doing it Damien I'm here at the convention center where they've got like all this stuff set up for the fringe which is really really cool um, and we're going to do some hand breakdowns. We've got four hand breakdowns to give you. And that is because we have busted the MTT in, I think, about 27th place. As you can see, all the uh, fringe stuff going up and has gone up. And there's the casino there. Let's get into these four hands. So let's get into these hand breakdowns. I've got four hands to get through. We'll get through them in standard fashion and then end the vlog there. Um, important to know that tonight, just you know when you think you're in your groove and then all of a sudden you get out your groove? It kind of just happened tonight. I couldn't find a way to get back into the groove. I tried a couple of like on the spot like meditations, like staring into zone, out in, you know, just going into space, um, trying to like get some breathing control back and just trying get back into the zone. Couldn't do it. Um, don't know what it is, uh, don't know what happened. I was crushing the table and the next minute just 
Like I said in the break vlog, I uh, just played really super duper bad. Bust out hand is not great either. Um, so with that all being said and done, uh, you know, when you don't play your best, you obviously get a bit annoyed. Um, we'll get into the four hands. We do play a couple hands really well tonight, which is great. But on a whole, uh, if I had to rate the session, I don't know what went on, but lost focus really quick and just played really, really horrid there. So uh, definitely not a vlog to say, Damien, you're a good player, um, so to say. Uh, but, you know, I'm definitely not a reg. I am a recreational that has an understanding of the game. Um, and like enjoys making content and enjoys playing and tries to play at a high level but at the same stage still make mistakes and definitely 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 have made a few leaky mistakes tonight that I'll definitely look to improve on next time um, and look at the end of the day um, definitely a value tournament there it was 1.8k for first I think tonight 1.6 one of the two for a $100 tournament in a very soft setting uh, in a freeze out huge so uh definitely we'll put that one on the agenda next time we do well at gg's game of course as well so without further ado let's get into hand number one had to move from our original position um due to being apparently we're not allowed to sit there but i'm now on some lovely benches on the other side of the convention center um our first hand that we do get is at 200 200 a little bit of a weirder structure in this tournament as we try to you know they try to get it to play deep early and then really really shallow really quick late on um in the end we look down at the ace of diamonds and the jack of spades and we have two limpers and we're on the button um we decide pre-flop here to of course raise it up and we raise it at 200 200 with two limpers to 1.3k um both original limpers do call while everybody else folds um out of the blinds and we go three ways to a flop that is a very nice flop for us to go get some value the flop itself is the ace of spades with the jack and the three of diamonds so we flop top two on what is a semi-wet board um we're not thrilled with diamond turns because from what i've seen people are just limp calling with diamonds um some of the time um as well and with that being all said and done um we do size up here and we bet three uh we bet 3.5k on the flop which is huge where one person folds the original limper folds and the guy in the middle position decides to make the call the turn is the five of clubs and we decide yet again to to bet when checked to we bet for four and a half k slightly lower sizing here when he does call he does have some weird like could have pocket freeze could have like ace jack himself which obviously if it is so be it he could have jacks and is just calling us along um this is where i want like i don't mind some of the draws calling obviously he could have like king 10 and king queen and if that's the case sizing down here gets them to call and they're not in the greatest of shape um we also know that the jack of diamonds on the river could be the most gin card available so keeping his draws in hitting that one card that's got so much implied on into playing a monster pot here early would be nice um in the end he does decide to make the call the river is another five it's the five of hearts um and so the board pairs um i'm now targeting hoping that he has jack x he has ace x um weak weaker you know ace x whatever and that we do call there is some sort of possibility that i guess we are up against like some weird king five of diamonds uh, i don't know um if i'm trying to like spitball hands that we could be beat by but there's not much of a beat on this flop so with that being said and done knowing that the draw did miss i bet really small here to hopefully get a call i bet 2.5k um which is a weird betting size in the end he thinks for about a second or so and then decides to release i think we're just up against a flush draw that was calling any sizing um if anything I had my time back definitely on the turn we would size up even more to about six or eight k and as we know from what i've said previously it unfortunately does not go the way we've planned but that was a really good pot that we played in the first hour i felt really comfortable and felt on top of my game hand number two of the night here and we are dealt the ace six of clubs on the button and middle position folds to him and he limps in for 400 a player that i just would describe as a very weak maybe new to the game player just likes the limp a lot sees a lot of flops for overfold sometimes as well um, with that being said and done we are pumping this one up here at 200 400 to 1.3k in the end it folds back around to him and he calls and we go heads up versus middle position when a flop that is quite nice the flop is the king of spades in the window which we don't particularly like but it's followed by the five and the seven of clubs and we obviously have the a six of clubs so the nut flush draw um he 
Donk leads block bets 400. Um, I think he, he doesn't have an understanding of like block betting or anything like that. I think it's just a, one of those weak things that new players do. To, oh, my hand's not strong, but it's strongish. So straight away, I put him on like a weak king. Um, and I decide that no matter what happens here, we're going to triple barrel and put him in a spot. So because of that, we decided to re-raise it up to 1.7k. We raised it to 1.7k over the 400 lead, um, which is still quite small, but not too bad. And he decides on a call. At this point, the player has only 12k behind, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, we can bet to get him all in here if we can. The turn is a interesting turn card. It is another five. Yet again, board pairing five. So there you are. Um, I think it was the five of diamonds. Might have been the five of hearts. My notes will have it. Um, I'm obviously recording without a set of notes behind me here. Um, in the end, he checks to me, and I know that because obviously we've had a couple of calls, there's about 4K in the pot, we can bet to in a bit K and know that if he calls, he only has pot behind and we can pot jam the river with any cards that we have. He probably pot commits him, but I think this player doesn't understand about being pot committed. So I feel like that if we bet, 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 if he has a weak king, like king four suited or something like that, he'll just give up um, on the river and keep himself in the tournament. That's my read. In the end, we bet 2.2k. Uh, he calls and the river is a very favorable nine of clubs. We hit the nut flush on the river. In the end, um, he decides to check it over to me. And um, with that being said and done, if I'm targeting weak hands, I should probably just jam it on the river anyway. But if my read is that he's going to call with weak kings or fold a lot of weak kings, sorry, is my read on the river to a jam, um, to I decide to really down bet it to try and just get a crying call. And in the end, I down bet it to 2.5k, which knows that if he calls, he leaves himself like 4k to stay in the tournament, which is nothing. It's crumbs. But I feel like this player would go, oh, because I'm still in the tournament, I'll call if I jam he folds. In the end, it's exactly what happens. He does call. I should roll over a flush and he goes, you're good. And he shows a king and folds. So I definitely think he had a weak king. We got max value. Another good recognition of a spot. Played quite well. Pat on the back. Um, and there's still some positives out of tonight's poor session that we did play well. We did start well. We did accumulate chips. A lot of the, my live, like, deep runs have definitely been that I've been, like, semi-short, not really got chips early. And then I've just, like, had, like, 20 bigs getting them in. Um, doubling up next minute I've got like 30 40 bigs late doors and I'm then pressuring people like ICM and final table pressure instead um, tonight I had chips early and then unfortunately wasted them like I said in the previous part of the blog about um, trying to polarize myself yet while I was at a table where no one understands that so they were just calling off anyway um, and yeah so those are the first two hands they went really well and we get into hand number three and hand number four now and we'll see how we go in both of them so like I mentioned in the, uh, you know, ragey part of the vlog on the break, we had like 38k after the previous hand. And from then we ran a couple of big bluffs that we did not get through. And we made some calls that were folded and we were like, you know, that were very light calls and then had to fold. We whiffed a lot of boards. And in this pot here, we have 18k at the blinds being 5-1. So we have 18 big blinds. And we get dealt in the big blind, an ace of diamonds and the king of spades, which is very nice. The UTG player, who I reckon is a very good player, has an understanding. I haven't played with him previously, but he looks like an online reg uh, by how he plays or someone that has some understanding um, of the game. Pumps it up to 3x. He makes it 3k under the gun. Um, and it folds around to the cutoff. The cutoff has only 11k, so he only has 11 big blinds, and he decides to rip it all in there for 11k effective. Folds to me in the big blind. We're obviously not going anywhere with Ace-King. Um, obviously, against a raise and a jam, Ace-King still in a great shape. We're probably flipping against the uh, the guy who jams 11k. He could also have Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack, and just go with 10 bigs. I'm going with it here because under the gun could have some hands that he raised folds, especially with my jam i feel like i can make him fold as well under the gun and we just go heads up against the shorter stack as it plays out and we're glad it doesn't go like that we rip in ace king and under the gun tanks for a little bit thinks about it and then decides to call off with ace queen off so we're ahead against ace queen and a cut off rolls over pocket freeze so we're pretty happy in this situation we know an ace or a king would scoop the whole pot which put us back in the tournament like in a really good shape and as long as we hold the side pot we're going to be left at 16k and only lose a few k if that is the case that's how it goes unfortunately though the flop has the three of diamonds in the window and the guy had two black threes and it goes four five seven seven all rainbow bricked out 
no drawers for me or the ace queen off nothing like that the num the pocket freeze fill up on the river and have us both decimated we obviously do get the side pot and we get back the 16k and that then leads us into our last hand the bust out hand a hand that i do play pretty poorly in terms of theory but there's a reason to why i've done this um and unfortunately we've just run into it and let's go and explain hand number four Hand number four, um, before we get into hand number four, I have jammed a lot um, since going down the 16K in the previous hand. We've got down the 14 and 12. Um, over a couple of limpers, we ripped in ace jack off. Um, there was a player that came to the table, fairly young lady, didn't understand the games, asking if, you know, how much is the blinds and, you know, asking how much can I actually bet and all those sort of questions. Um, she limped in twice and both times she limped in, I had king nine off and I had king ten suited and I ripped both of them um, and got it through. The table's quite passive. Usually when someone raises, they had it, um, except this player here. So this player here I've played with before and this guy is an old reg that understands the game but has got angle shooting in his repertoire. I've seen him plenty of times when he gets a bit of a bigger stack, raising out a turn, jamming out a turn um, to just induce action with big hands or to, you know, perceived to be strong to bluff. I've seen it. He's been warned for it. He's been given like penalties in the past for it before. Um, it's not what happens in this hand, but that history is plays into my mind. We're under the gun here with 19K stack. Obviously, the blinds are 1K, 2K. So we only have, what, we have just under 10 bigs. Um... And we look down at ace for your clubs. Now, this player that I do mention is in the big blind, and a couple of times it's limped to him in the big blind, he has ripped it um, quite wide. Um, one of the times he got called by a smaller stack, and he had a jack eight off, um, and he held against the smaller stack. He himself only has 20K, though, so we've seen that we have very similar stats, 10 big blinds. Um, a wee limp, the very weak player that I did mention, the young lady does limp along, and he decides to rip it in there for 20K. Now... Ace free of clubs is definitely not a limp of 10 big blinds under the gun. It's not a limp anytime. Uh, I'm not a big fan of limping. In my limping range, I do like having like ace five suited, some queen, king, queen suited, some king, queen offs, and aces and kings, obviously. Um, so with that being said, I don't think this player thinks about ranges or limping ranges too much under the gun. I was, would be limping aces here. And I thought ace three suit is not a bad limping hand to limp with, to balance it with aces, obviously. Secondly, but more importantly, my intention was to limp, knowing that if this guy went all in, I have to run my edge here. I think I'm going to be ahead of him. I'm going to call off. That might sound weird to some people. It's definitely not standard. It's definitely not GTO. But against this player, knowing that he knows how to jam wide, knowing that we've seen him jam wide, and he's jammed four or five times in the last couple of orbits from different positions, um, he may have just been getting hands. I've decided that in my head that, look, I have an ace blocker. It's ace free suited. I'm going to limp call it off for the same stack as his, and off we go. Um, I tank for a while because I do mull over the fact that, you know, if he had a really strong hand, wouldn't he just squeeze it uh, to like uh, a few K, like 5K, and then induce a call and then just barrel it off? Um, or would he only squeeze everything? Uh, does he just squeeze his really strong hands and then raise folds his really weak hands to stay in the tournament? Um, because I don't think he's the greatest reg of all time, but he's a reg. In the end, I go with what I think was my intention originally, which was the limp call him off, and we do call off with the ace for the clubs, which is not standard. Unfortunately, we get a showed two black jacks, which is unfortunate. The flop, however, gives us some help. We, the flop is deduce free five. So we do flop a pair. There is running backdoor equity to chop slash or take it with the will. Unfortunately, though, those chop outs I do not get met. There's no clubs on the board. It is a seven turn, so it's rainbow of the deuce, three, five, seven. In my head, I actually thought there was a four on the board, so I actually say out loud, oh, five of diamonds, please, um, on the river, if we can. I wish I filmed it, because I was like, it got me straight until a good friend, mate of mine, just moved tables, says, actually, no, Damien, you don't make it straight. I was like, oh, shivers. I thought it was a four on the flop, not a five. And I was like, well, any ace, any three, please. And, and, and miraculously, the five of diamonds actually comes on the river. And I just go, well, there we are. I bust. Um, definitely not standard. Definitely a player I do not recommend to anyone at home. But against this player with a bit of history, I decided, you know what? Especially the way he's been playing tonight. Especially the fact we got to see a jack eight off all in earlier from him. I'm going to call off and run my edge. 
Um, unfortunately, we do not, and we are behind, and we do not catch up. We do not donk out. We do not hit a free. We do not hit an ace, and that is us done. So into the tournament for $100, out of the tournament for zero in, I think, like 27th, 28th place with the top eight getting paid. First place getting paid, well, I think it was 1640 Might have been 1840 Definitely a tournament in the future. I'll definitely look to play, but uh, unfortunately tonight is not that night. I'm definitely going to save more bullets for GG's home game with the cash game. I think there's a lot of value there, but definitely expect in the future especially when we back at work and you know getting um some additional finances back under control from next week definitely expect to see me occasionally throw in the hundred dollar tournament i definitely do see myself as more of an mtt reg but at the same stage i definitely do think that the live cash game streets are probably a bit more juicier and a bit more vlog inducing than the mtt grinds where we could grind for a few hours and come like 12 for nothing um which i think is not the greatest of content as well so with that all being said and done that's the end of the vlog no post editing demo today it is links down below come follow us live on twitch where we do occasionally stream online poker of course but mainly football manager where obviously the instagram for all the updates live we post obviously snapshots of how we're going in the tournament etc tonight wasn't obviously the funnest of instagrams but we've had definitely a plenty of other spots in past where we've updated instagram so those links are down below give it a like subscribe let me know in the comment section what you would have done differently do you reckon i should start including hands where we whiff boards and maybe explain why i'm calling and then folding that could make the vlog really long but if you want if you would like to see that please let me know as well important to know i have not gone to cash tonight it's 10 o'clock i'm gonna go home get a good night's sleep um do some editing obviously for this tomorrow and then eventually get around to probably playing some cash tomorrow night which we'll vlog but wait and see how we feel until then though i'll see you next time guys have a good night and i'll see you in vlog number three